Denver. A Phoenix man is getting treatment for Ebola virus after he said he wasn't feeling well. How doctors are reacting. The evening edition starts now. Live from KYMA Studios, this is News 11 Nightside, your number one source for news in the desert southwest. Thank you for joining us. Irene Cruz and Rob Fram have the night off. Continuing our coverage on a developing story out of San Diego tonight, a Yuma doctor and his wife are dead after what police are calling a double murder early this morning. A neighbor confirmed the male victim is Dr. David Haynes. He was an emergency room physician at Yuma Regional Medical Center. Officials from the San Diego Police Department say officers responded to a 911 call about 3 a.m. after the dispatcher heard gunshots and a man asking for help before the phone disconnected. Officers arrested a 22 Two year old, the son of the two victims. Neighbors say they were baffled. She's 26, and her mother and father have been murdered by her only brother, her only sibling. Officers found both victims in that house. Dr. Haynes and his wife both died later at a hospital. And Yuma Regional Medical Center sent out a press release today saying, and quote, today we have lost an excep exceptional physician, colleague, and friend, a man who dedicated his life career to caring for patients in our community. Dr. Haynes was an outstanding and dedicated physician who genuinely cared for people. His compassion and kind nature will be deeply missed. And protesters upset with the Ferguson grand jury's decision not to indict a police officer in the killing of an unarmed man staged a demonstration Thursday night. A group of about 75 people chanted as they walked through a Target store in the city of Brentwood. That's about 12 miles south of Ferguson. The group also demonstrated for about 15 minutes in front of the building. Police were called and monitored the group. There was not any violence and no one was arrested. The store remained open during the following protest. And in Arizona, a man who recently traveled to Sierra Leone in West Africa is receiving treatment after calling 911 because he did not feel well. Authorities arrived at the 32-year-old's Awatuki apartment this morning, actually Friday morning, in full hazmat gear out of concern that he could be sick with Ebola. Local news station KNXV reports the man returned to Arizona from Sierra Leone Wednesday. The country is one of the hardest hit by the Ebola virus, which has killed more than 5,600 people, according to the World Health Organization. Health officials in Arizona say that they are monitoring the situation and no word on the man's health. Well, Yuma Police Department blocked off South 5th Avenue on 1st Street this morning in response to a structure fire. No word on when the fire started. News 11 arrived on the scene just after 5 this morning to the structure fully engulfed. Yuma Fire Department was on the scene battling the blaze and no word on any injuries. We'll continue, continue following this story and provide updates as they become available. Well, after the craze of Black Friday comes the tradition of Small Business Saturday, a day to give back to the local economy. News 11 strolled the street of downtown to see how local shops are preparing for tomorrow. Definitely just waiting for that crowd to come in. After Black Friday comes Small Business Saturday, a day to support smaller storefronts, which are mainstays to our local economy. We're looking for people that may have taken advantage of Black Friday to come out and shop locally and take advantage of some of the deals that the small businesses are offering. Plenty of local businesses line Main Street in downtown Yuma. And Shop Local reminds us to keep the money in the community. And Miss Betty is already anticipating shoppers at her boutique. Well, that's nationwide uh, shops, small businesses businesses and they'll be here. Where we're standing right now, uh, the area is made up of, of small businesses. Uh, the businesses perhaps are not meeting their potential, but it has great potential to be a very vibrant community. Muller and his wife prefer the quiet downtown shopping. <laughs> the craziness of Black Friday shopping, I would suggest it's something that you, you avoid at all costs. Small businesses don't have the same funds for advertising like larger stores, so it relies on word of mouth. The money that the people spend here is far, far better off for the community if it's spent at a small business, it stays here. If you are interested in the concept of, uh, of community, it's the small businesses that build communities 
uh, not the large corporations. Plus, some say smaller businesses provide a unique hometown experience. You know, have a quality product, have a good experience, and share the good experience with uh, people in the community. And that generates more business, and that helps us keep our doors open. Main Squeeze, Bare Naked Soaps, Miss Betty's Boutique, Pint House. These are all local businesses that are going to that are going to benefit from, you know, shop local. Tomorrow is a day to shop local and help stretch your dollar a little farther. When you support local businesses, you're supporting your neighbor. Well, it's that time of year again. Local Marines need your help collecting toys for kids in the area who are in need. It's all for their annual Toys for Tots toy drive. News 11's Kelly Taylor has more on how you can get involved in tonight's Making a Difference report. With the Marine Corps Reserve are hoping people pick up an extra toy for a child in need while they're shopping this Black Friday. And mother and daughter Courtney and Keenan Cortez accepted the challenge. I can't imagine little children not having the privileges that we've had. 7 o'clock tonight, you can drop off any donation at the roundabout in front of the Harkins Theater at Yuma Palms Mall. Well, a homeless man says he could have had Thanksgiving dinner at a shelter, but he wanted to experience the holiday with a family again. After he posted his wish online, a Virginia family made it a dream come true. Reporter Beverly Kidd paid a visit to see how dinner was coming along. They were strangers until today. Thank you so much. But Neil Scheidels and Ashley and Corey McLemore bonded right away. Oh, I love them. I mean, I love them. I mean, me and Corey connected as, as soon as I met him. Honestly, I almost felt like I knew him when I first pulled in. He was, you know, standing outside. And I just in instantly connected. I, you know, reached out to shake his hand, and he pulled me in for a hug. And that's really what all I was looking for was, like, a family to share you know, because I used to do it with my family, you know, and, and I miss that. I miss it. You know, it's just not the same at the mission. I went through it last year and I just didn't want to go through it again. Well, this year, Neil wouldn't have to spend Thanksgiving at the shelter. The McLemores were one of the first to respond to Neil's request to have Thanksgiving dinner with a family. Well, I'm making some mashed potatoes and some English peas. We already have a ham and a turkey. All of my grandmother's southern recipes. But today was more than just about sharing a meal. It was about sharing a life. A lot of people could capitalize off of this themselves and um, every post that I have seen him post has been the shelter needs this. The people in the shelter are hurting. It's never about Neil. And now the shelter, the Union Mission, is getting much needed donations because Neil had the courage to reach out. I can sit there and just cry because people are doing so much for the homeless now. Bargain hunters are out filling the malls coast to coast tonight looking for big Black Friday savings. And that's where we find Jay Gray at the Mall of America with a closer look. At the Mall of America, we've already seen 220,000 shoppers. That's more than the entire Black Friday last year. And it was a quiet day in Ferguson, Missouri, but voices of protest filled the air in other cities near and far. From New York to California, demonstrators protested inside and outside of shopping malls, calling for a Black Friday boycott of retail stores. Then demonstrators are hoping consumers will hold back on holiday spending to make a statement about a case that's far from closed in the court of public opinion. Brian Moore has the story from Washington. Around the country, protesters responded to the Ferguson grand jury decision with calls for a... Some community members decided to use this day to help in the cleanup efforts that are just beginning. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon thanked the State Guard and patrol members who spent their holiday in Ferguson and who will remain at work over the next few days. Well, let's take a look out... All right, well, let's take a look outside at the beautiful live shot. Thank you to our friends at Yuma Rehabilitation Hospital for that live shot. Looks like it's a beautiful, clear night out in Yuma. And let's take a look at your temperatures right now. In El Centro, it's 55 degrees, Blythe 56, and Yuma at 62. Very mild temperatures. And take a look at your local radar and satellite. Not too much coming in, um, but be prepared. You will have some rain coming up in the next couple of days. 
And tonight is mild, tomorrow a little bit warmer, and down the road, like I said, rain. Actually, we have a 30% chance of rain on Monday and 40% chance of rain on Tuesday. But we'll have more coming up in your full weather forecast. Well, up next on Nightside, what some call Black Friday, those in Colorado are referring to as Green Friday. We'll tell you why after this. And fighting fire is a very dangerous job, and firefighters save lives every day. We'll tell you how one life-saving drone can assist where time is essential. Wasted seconds could mean the difference between life and death. Stay with us. You're watching News 11, where news comes first. Your favorite talk shows are on News Talk 560 KBLU. America's Morning News at 5 a.m. Rush at 10, Sean at 1, and Glenn at 4. News Talk 560 KBLU, where Yuma comes to talk. Cons Home Plus has everything you need for the holidays. Plus, we've extended our Black Friday sale. Get 0% interest. Live from KYMA Studios, this is News 11 Nightside, your number one source for news in the desert southwest. Welcome back. Well, it's one of the biggest shopping days of the year, but some don't call it Black Friday. In Colorado, it's called Green Friday for so stores selling newly legal recreational marijuana, hoping big sales will draw big crowds. NBC's Haley Jackson reports. Better living through technology, firefighters have a high-flying tool that may help to save lives. Brian Allen explains. And hopes that process goes quickly so the drone can be deployed soon. I think it'll be a useful tool in the city of Brookings for quite some time. Well, that is very cool. Those drones can go in where firefighters can't get to. And after the NFL suspended him indefinitely, hear which former NFL player has been cleared to return to the field. And coming up, there's rain in our future. How soon? We'll let you know when you'll need to pull out those umbrellas and raincoats coming up next. All right, well, let's take a look outside and see how soon rain is in our future. Well, it's currently 62 degrees here in Yuma with a humidity of 25% and dew point of 26 degrees. Winds coming in from the south southeast at about 7 miles per hour. And right now in El Centro, it's about 55 degrees, just a little cooler. Humidity of 52% with a dew point of 38 degrees. Winds coming in from the west at about 5 miles per hour. Pretty mild over there right now. And let's look at your Omnimac temperatures. Today it's 84 degrees for a high, 56 for a low. Normally around 72 degrees for a high, 50 for a low. And records dating back to 1954 we were 87 degrees for a high and 31 degrees for a low back in 1919. That was a long time ago. And let's look at your Omnimac temperatures for El Centro. 82 for a high, 47 for a low. Normally about 73 for a high, 45 for a low. Records dating back to 1950, 88 degrees today and 28 degrees for a low in 1976. That is freezing. I'm glad that's not this year. <laughs> and let's look outside at your regional satellite radar. Just a little bit of wind coming in. I guess the, there could be rain in our future. That's what Rob Fram has been telling me. And let's look at some more beautiful pictures of the wind and precipitation coming in. And some currents across the U.S. In San Francisco, 60 degrees. Denver, 59. Kansas City, 52. Down there in Albuquerque, we have 45, 42 degrees. That's pretty cold for New Mexico. Up there in Seattle, 38 for New Mexico. Up there in Seattle, 38. So... We should be thankful for our weather. That's all I have to say about that. And let's look at Yuma, the beautiful eight-day forecast. Um, the next couple of days, it looks like it'll be 81 for Saturday, 78 for Sunday. Monday is 78 degrees with actually 30% chance of rain. Tuesday, 73 degrees with a 40% chance of rain. Wednesday, 76. Thursday, 78. And let's... Uh, 
skip ahead to El Centro. Tomorrow it will be 77 degrees, beautiful and mild Sunday, 77 degrees as well. And uh, be prepared for some rain, though, um, on Monday, possibly on Tuesday as well. All right, so another beautiful shot of our live shot outside. Thank you, Yuma Rehabilitation Hospital, for that. Well, up next in sports, it's a sad holiday weekend for the Ohio State University community after three days of no sign of the missing college athlete. We'll tell you what measures they are taking to continue to look for him. This week, we're happy... Welcome back. Former Baltimore Ravens running back Ray Rice has been cleared to return to the field. The NFL suspended him indefinitely after video surfaced showing Rice knocking his wife out in a casino elevator. Now that Rice has won his appeal, many wonder whether a team will sign him to a contract. NBC's Chris Pallone reports. He already has a Super Bowl ring, but former Baltimore Raven Ray Rice just got one of the biggest wins of his career. Friday, a former judge serving as an arbitrator overturned the NFL's indefinite suspension of Rice, calling it arbitrary. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell suspended Rice twice, first in June for two games after learning of the elevator incident, then in September when TMZ Sports released graphic surveillance video showing Rice punching his then fiance. the NFL suspended him indefinitely. The search continues in Columbus, Ohio this holiday weekend for a missing college athlete. Friends, family and other students are searching for Ohio State's Costa Cara George. He's a current football player and former wrestler of three years. Today, Ohio State football coach Urban Meyer issued a statement. The athlete was last seen early Wednesday morning and has missed at least two days of practice. Marcus Thorpe reports. Uh, Kenny and 315. Friends, even some complete strangers. Oh. We're